Project V with Elisa Wilson. Oh, welcome back to another episode of Project V. Shit, it's been a while, hasn't it? You'll notice I'm also doing this as voice only because my video editing skills are just not quite up to scratch yet. I'm not happy with the editing, so until I can figure out how to work a camera properly and sort a decent editing suite, you've got my voice and my voice only. Where do we start? Well... I mean, let's be honest, most people want to know about OnlyFans um, and how that's been. I said from the get-go that I'd be transparent with that. And let me tell you, it has been crazy. It's been a fucking crazy few months. And that's also why I've kind of taken a while to sit down and do another podcast because, well, you know what we'll do? We'll cover the lessons and some of the pros and, and everything that's happened so far. I want to preface this podcast by saying that the reason it's taken so long to sit down and do this is because I've been processing the craziest last few months with all the changes at once, the job situation, uh, relying on myself to make money. That's something that I overlooked is that it's it's up to me. The self-doubt. We've had a rental property that we owned for a year, which we have come around to selling just because of the, the ever-changing market and the interest rates. So there's been a, a few external factors as well. And I didn't want to speak too soon and come on and give a false idea of sex work and the sex industry and how easy it is to make money because it's a fucking hustle. And if anything, the girls that I've met, um, and I'm so grateful for meeting the girls that I have over the last little while they're fucking on I have so much respect for their grind and I'm so grateful for the girls that I've met and connected with who thankfully have accepted me as somebody who's not just here for five minutes and not afraid to get a pussy out so (laughs) we're diving into the OnlyFans convo fuck it let's just uh, let's just be straight up and transparent eh I, I don't really have a big following. Um, I have a, a few on TikTok, not really on Instagram. I mean, it's it's growing, but I don't have a ridiculous amount that me starting OnlyFans would be an instant given to make money. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused is because they see so many girls making money, but they have big followings to begin with. And from the get-go, a few people I spoke to had a few concerns or or raised the question of, well, how are you going to generate your leads because you don't have a decent-sized following? So I took that into account, and it's I want to be transparent with that because the average person nowadays that starts an OnlyFans, because it's incredibly, it's an incredibly saturated, market now they'll only make a few hundred dollars a month and it's up to you to market yourself and to put in the work and here I am I'm trying to do that but can that still be done is the market just so oversaturated that you're not going to hack it anymore I don't know and that's what I find interesting and lots of people can't hack it and there's kind of there's this joke that you know oh if I lose my job I'll just start OnlyFans because it's easy it's an easy way to make money and it's guaranteed well that's far from true because it's a fucking grind. One of the lessons that I've taken so far is to not compare your level one to somebody else's level 10. I've realized that now, but the girls that I was speaking to before starting, a lot of them had the upper advantage because they had really big followings or they had been doing it for years. And you can't compare yourself to them and go into this thinking that it's going to be easy money because you, you're you not on an even playing field. They're miles ahead, so you can't compare that. You have to go into this thinking, okay, well, what's going to happen if I don't make money? And I, I had the blinkers on with that one <laughs> because I don't really have a backup plan but you know that's that's on me (laughs) it's single swim out here you know and at the moment it's working well for me but who knows it might not work well forever I'm fortunate that it did start off really well for me but your boundaries are so instantly tested in this line of work I (laughs) for example when I first launched my OF I said to myself, right, nah, I'm not going to get your pussy out. Just, you know, ease into it. Start with a few nudes. Three days after launching, I was in a hotel room in Bali with a fucking wooden dildo. (laughs) Out 
for the world to see. Oh God. I think the only part of me was a little bit hesitant because once it's out there, it's out there. I'm I'm very comfortable in the decision that I've made to bear it all. I have absolutely no issue with that. If you know me, you know I don't do things by halves. Um, so I thought, fuck it. I didn't expect to get that many people subscribing that quickly. So I was like, fuck it. You know what? If I'm doing this, I'm doing this. For somebody who's not comfortable doing that, it'll chew you up and it'll spit you out. I was super, super fortunate going back to the money thing um, because this is what everybody wants to know, right? How much have you made? How much have you made? I've been fortunate enough to make a decent amount um, in the first couple of months. This needs to come with a grain of salt because it may not always be like this. The first two weeks, I pulled in over 10K US, which was crazy for me. But I was and am making such an effort to network with other creators and get collaborations lined up. And you have to be willing to put yourself out there and to own it. And for somebody who's new, you know, these girls don't owe me anything. It's up to me to prove myself. And your word is your word and that's all you have. So taking time to learn from other girls, it's not a competition. Find your vibe, back yourself and and talking to others and sharing experiences with people who live in that world and get it, that helps so much. So it's been it's been a successful start. I don't want to throw figures out there because I'm cautiously optimistic that I can continue to keep my OF what it is. But it could all come crumbling down. People may get sick of me. The first two months, absolutely pumped. Um, and I was on such a high. I was like, this is great. But then people get bored. You know, if you're not spicing things up, people will stop subscribing. You've got to keep up the spice. And that's, I, I think people get confused there because, you know, you can't just post the odd nude here and there and expect people to continue subscribing because the market is oversaturated. And there was a period of about a week where I didn't do much in the way of content because I was so fucking stoned. <laughs> and we will get to that later. But reality kind of hit me in the face because you see statistics starting to decline and I start freaking out. And don't get me wrong, money is coming in, but I have really high standards for myself and reality starts to bite when you see subscription numbers go down and you're like, fuck, okay, self-doubt creeps in. It's up to me to make money now. So I really, over that week, I was in a little bit of a funk and a weed haze. And once I got out of that... I sat down and I was like, okay, I, I need to be more strategic about this. this there needs to be a, a fucking game plan with this because it, it's a game and it's a hustle and you've got to market yourself and you've got to be clever. So I'm learning to be strategic and I have to market myself over lots of platforms and really utilize social media to drive that. Um, like TikTok, I have th- my biggest amount of followers is on TikTok. So I'd be silly if I wasn't utilizing that. You're working in the space of digital marketing. It's not just sex work. You're you're selling yourself and you're marketing yourself and you have to do that in a really clever way because you can't openly promote sex work on a, on a lot of these platforms, especially TikTok and Instagram are really cracking down. So you've got to be clever. You have to be really clever. It's just creating exposure and of course owning it. Like I, I own it. Yeah, hell yeah, I'm a sex worker. I'm fucking owning that. And, and there's no guarantee that I'm going to continue making money and I'm using that to motivate me so I can throw everything and every ounce of energy that I can into promoting myself and, and doing this properly and taking those, those risks. You know, jumping on a TikTok live, that fucking, that racks my nerves up. But if it's going to create engagement and help with that creativity, because once I've done it, it fills me with that, oh, fuck, see, this is what you need to be doing. It's like that positive affirmation of, okay, cool, I took the risk, I did it, it wasn't that bad. And we'll touch on the weed smoking soon, but, you know, there have been some bad habits that have been holding me back from taking those risks. And that is, in turn, creating a bit of anxiety around, okay, well, fuck, this is my job now, I need to constantly be on the ball, because if I don't, then money stops coming in. You know, at least I can say if it didn't work, I gave it everything instead of half-assing it, which I can also be really, really good at. (laughs) So for the moment, things are going really, really good. But circling back to the weed thing, I also really need to keep my mental health in check because there are things in my life that I'm not overly stoked with at the moment, just in terms of coping mechanisms for me and, and bad habits. And that's probably also why it's taken so long for me to sit down and do a podcast, because there's been a little bit of shame around it. 
the last time I sat down and, and did a podcast, I spoke about how I was going to go to Bali and it was going to be a reset and I was going to stop smoking weed. Well, guess what? That didn't work. <laughs> not the Bali escapisms, not the running away for, for a few weeks thinking it'll fix all my mental illnesses by spending two weeks at a yoga retreat. <laughs> oh, but I can't discredit Bali. It was amazing. And I'll touch a little bit on Bali later on, but <laughs> it's it's pretty evident that there are things and habits in my life currently that I know I need to let go of in order for my mind to be clear. And I'll be honest, I'm struggling to let go of those things because there's comfort in them. And the fact that I'm struggling to leave these habits behind, it weighs on my mind. And when your mind is scattered, you don't have a clear head or the capacity to be working to your potential. So that frustration creates more anxiety for me. And then the coping mechanisms become more appealing and we fall back into that and the cycle continues and continues. But disruption creates innovation and innovation is what I need to get back into that creative space. So I know what I need to do and it's going to be hard, but the the weed smoking, that needs to go. I want to do an entire episode on this um, because there's this notion that weed isn't addictive or it's not bad to be addicted to because it's a herb, but fuck. Let me tell you, when weed is abused, it's fucking hard to quit. I've I, it's had a real grasp on me for about five years and I've had periods where I haven't smoked and I've let things recently get pretty out of hand. And for me, I can process it because with everything being so new and me navigating new avenues of life, it creates uncertainty. And that's a trigger for me because I'm an anxious person. My coping mechanisms um, are to smoke weed because it numbs things and it makes me feel better. And I've been relying on that to self-soothe, but it's actually been created adding so much more anxiety and I need to kick it so in order for me to not be in my own head so much because when my life is balanced I get so much more done I have so much more energy I'm more creative and I need to harness that to make this lifestyle work for myself so I need to keep myself accountable and talking about that helps for me which is why I started these podcasts in the first place because it's me processing my thoughts and if people can relate to that then fuck we need to start a community honestly <laughs> what I'm what I'm doing is commencing an eight-week challenge just because I'm a goals person I need something to look forward to I'm also obsessed with the gym and health and fitness so I sign up I, I train under a guy by the name of Mark Carroll his coach Coaching programs are the best I have ever, ever done. So he runs eight-week challenges, which I, I want to set for myself anyway, because you'd think sex would burn off all the food, but I tell you what, I've put on probably like three kilos. But hey, the uh, the odd subscribers don't mind because it's more cushion for the push. <laughs> Anyway, I'm doing an eight-week challenge just to try and lose a little bit of fat, feel feel better in myself. For me, exercising, it's more of a mental thing. It helps me feel good in the head um, and to commit to that for eight weeks. I just want to be able to see some results. And what better time to tie into giving up weed than doing that eight-week challenge. So no weed for eight weeks either. I've quit other addictions so much easier then then weed for some reason it's really fucking hard because I think it's it's so socially acceptable but I'm getting onto a tangent because that's a whole thing so I guess we should touch quickly on Bali uh was it worth it my intention for a reset nah Bali was amazing it helped me recenter and highlight that I have some shadow work to do actually a lot of work to do um but it was a beautiful place to process that I did learn a lesson <laughs> I, I realized that I put so much pressure on myself that it, it's almost unhealthy. And also I need to keep my mouth shut and not speak on things before they've happened yet. Because then it, for me, if I don't follow through on something, I feel really shamed and a little bit embarrassed. That's something that I also need to work on. But I, I was out in Bali on my stories being like, I'm doing all these amazing podcasts. Well, where are they, Elisa? <laughs> because I haven't seen them. So the plan was to go over, be super zen, um, be productive, smash out some of these amazing podcasts at a studio there by the name of Lighthouse. But instead, I got really, really sick for about a week. It knocked me way worse than what COVID did. Um, I had no choice but to lay there in the sun and do nothing, which, you know, in hindsight, I'm not complaining about. It is what I needed. And I also... (laughs) 
launched OnlyFans two days before I flew to Bali and I don't know why I did that because I was hoping that it was going to pop off but I don't know maybe I didn't expect it to pop off but it, it went nuts and then there was an overwhelm of oh my god I've come here to do yoga and relax but I'm needing to rate dick pics by the pool so how do you balance that <laughs> and the influx of subscribers I was like oh fuck it we're doing this doesn't matter where I am I didn't put to the side the mental wellness focus um, that was still part and parcel of it, but I would have liked to have not been on my phone so much. It was a new, it is, it's still a new and exciting time and I fucking love it. Um, but maybe a little bit more balance <laughs> for the future. I did a Ayurvedic retreat. It was for two weeks. It was um, like a mini Panchakarma, which is based on Ayurvedic principles of health and wellness. Um, it was a plant-based raw diet. There was um, detox cleansers and spa treatments. It was a fantastic place to be and a fantastic place to take videos of my pussy <laughs> for my side gig. <laughs> Oh, and some of the requests I got, honestly, I tell you what, I went over there very unprepared and I tell most of these yarns on my other site so you know where to subscribe. <laughs> but I was over there and I was getting requests from people like, okay, I want to see some sex toy stuff. I didn't bring any sex toys with me. So what did I do? I took a stroll down to the market and you know those wooden bottle openers? <laughs> that are shaped like penises oh well, fuck it that'll do so <laughs> you can only imagine them from somebody who said they weren't going to get their pussy out three days later she's selling videos of <laughs> wooden barley dildos okay I'm going to end that there because that is getting down an extremely R18 rabbit hole <laughs> you know where to go for more and I have every intention to go back to Bali, but the focus right now is navigating how to make money for myself and to continue marketing myself and, of course, getting the puss out. <laughs> and some people just don't understand how I can be so comfortable talking about all of this. And naturally, you know, there would be concerns about my mental health because it can be a really slippery slope for some people. I find this hard to put into words that I'm so comfortable selling my body. I have no issue putting my body out there. What I had an issue with was selling my soul and working for somebody else in a role that I wasn't happy with and felt silenced and unable to speak my truth and not have any repercussions for that. And that to me is so much worse and detrimental to my mental health than having the freedom to do what I want, say what I want, market myself how I want, have fun with it. That to me is so freeing. Me selling my body is part and parcel with that. There's no issue. But I'm not going to lie and say it's been easy watching people start to view you differently because people do. And, and it sucks, you know, there are people who you think are close to you that start to pull back and you have to accept it for what it is. And that's not a reflection of me. That's a reflection of their thoughts and their feelings on this industry. And people can only meet you as far as they've met themselves. You know, you can't take personally the projections of other people because it's the sex industry. You know, there's stigmas and notions around it. But just because I have an OnlyFans doesn't make me any different to who I am as a person. And I, I don't want people to view me differently. But it, it, it is. It's a struggle. It's something that you just have to accept. There's always going to be opinions and judgments and I don't owe anybody an explanation, but I am such an open book that if somebody, you know, wants to know more or a family member, my, my family's been great, to be honest. I can't fucking fault them. Um, my <laughs> my mum takes it like an absolute champ. But, you know, I'm still a sook at the best of times. I'd be lying if I said, you know, it doesn't upset me to some degree when people start to view you differently. I, ha I have to refocus and recenter when those thoughts start weighing on my mind because this is so much more than just making money on OnlyFans for me. It's outside of the norm, which, to be honest, is just the kind of person I am. And sex sells and it makes money quick. And my drive and my, my vision is bigger and my hustle to make that happen is so strong. And me living this lifestyle and doing what I'm doing in order to fulfill that, that is drowning out the noise of anybody who's doubting, anybody who's viewing me differently because they don't understand and maybe they don't have the capacity to understand or they're not willing to understand and that shouldn't bother me because I'm, I've got my head down, I've got my vision locked in, I'm keeping quiet and believing in myself and that is silencing the noise and 
if you're not applying that foundation into your life, you're, you're wasting it. If you don't have a passion, a vision, something to focus on that's bringing you joy, that's pretty sad. Please don't confuse this with me talking about sex work or this industry. I'm talking in general. You need to find something in your life that ignites your passion for me, that's being creative, being a goof, being a bit of a, a comedian and a class clown. I like the attention. I like selling my body. <laughs> People enjoy it. I have no issue with that. But you can apply those principles to, to anything. And along with drowning out the noise is the feedback and and the comments that I've been getting from people who I don't even know. And that is so heartwarming. This is a nice note to wrap up on, to be honest, is that over the last few months, I've met some really incredible people and had some really deep conversations. And I've felt validated for the first time in a long time. And I know that the key to me being able to keep this up is consistency. And that comes from all other aspects of my life being in check. And I know that I'm doing the right thing and it ignites me even more when I see messages from other females who I've never met before telling me that they feel inspired and empowered by watching me live life on my terms. And I don't want to give anybody a false representation of what that's like because there are days where it's really fucking hard and there are weeks where you doubt yourself and they're telling me how it helps them give less of a fuck about their perceptions of others. And it's it's all just so relatable there are so many people that struggle with these issues and to put that out onto the platform that I have to have people relate to that that's that's heartwarming for me and that fills me with that motivation and drive knowing that okay this is what I need to be doing and it gets me in the feels because for so long I wished I could be that person and now I'm, I'm slowly turning into that person and there's so much more learning and so much more mistakes that, that I have to make, but I'm here for it. And I back myself and I back my ambition. And if it fails, it fails. But if it works, the possibilities are absolutely endless. But on that note, um, thanks for listening. If you've gotten this far, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the OnlyFans. <laughs> Fund my life. Fund my self-growth. <laughs> okay, bye. Project V with Elisa Wilson.